Good evening, everyone. TSB Television is proud to present WFA Football. Today's game is a treat for all you women's football fans and any football fans out there as the Iowa Thunder come to James Griffin Stadium to take on the Minnesota Machine with Midwest Division implications on the line. Stick around, everyone. This great match will start in a few minutes. I'm Mike Beaton, joined by Jeff Williams and Jeff, first game together, and uh, I know we've worked together on some Lynx games, but uh, we haven't called the game before. Are you ready to call some football in the I'm summer? I'm ready to call some football, and if you look out here, the conditions are the way football should be played in the rain. It's a light, misty <laughs> rain. It is not one of those hot and humid days, but on the other hand, there isn't any snow or ice or cold. Uh, for those who don't know, which is most of you, uh, my car died on the way to the game last week, and literally I was sitting outside of the stadium with a stalled vehicle. So I heard it. I didn't see it. And how is your car handling now? Oh, it's dead. <laughs> it's, I, I, I meant like with your new, have you searched for a new car yet? Oh, I've been searching. One? I haven't found yet. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when you got a car with 269,000 miles, 21 years old. Yeah, those things have a uh, lifetime or a limit to their uh, usefulness, don't they? Yeah, they have a tendency of rusting in peace at this point <laughs> in time. <laughs> rusting in peace. So uh, today we mentioned uh, Midwest Division implications on the line. Minnesota coming in 5-1, and one, Iowa 4-2. and two. And so it, if Minnesota wins, then you know they win the division outright. But if Iowa wins, then you have – it gets interesting because if Iowa wins by 15 or more points, they will take the division. But if they don't because of head-to-head -head, – competition Minnesota would take it because they would have scored more points in Iowa so uh, it could get interesting here if Iowa wins it's almost like when they uh, put a line in those NFL games so hey, that's, how, that's how it feels like this is playoff time this is crunch time and when you've got two evenly matched teams anything can happen in a game like tonight and you even have the weather as a factor uh, just coming into this game Iowa 142 total points this year Minnesota, 140 total points. Iowa, 23.7 points per game. And Minnesota, 23.3 points per game. So they are very, very evenly matched. And so how this game is going to turn out, it's going to be anybody's guess, which means it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> exactly. Now, if for those of you who are new to WFA football, they go with NFL time. So it's 15-minute quarters and two-minute warnings in the second and fourth quarters, but they don't have the long media timeouts or as long timeouts to change possession so the game does move by a little more quickly but uh it's they treat it just like any standard men's game well this is considered professional and they got the professional rules in place the only difference between professional men's and professional women's is the fact that women do not have football in high school and in college except maybe some schools may have intramural so really for a lot of players in the wfa this is their first opportunity at playing the game. So, you know, it's not quite up to NFL standards, but in, you know, another five years, ten years, it'll get there. The one rule, it, really the big difference in rules is the NFL, you have to have both feet in bounds, and the WFA, you, can, you have to have just one. So it's like the college game in that sense, but otherwise it's quite similar, and I believe there's also a force-out rule, so they don't have – but we'll see if that comes into play later on. It's one of those more fine details, and we don't have uh, replay challenges available. So, Well, not yet, in a few more <laughs> years. But it looks like Iowa has won the toss, and they have elected to receive. And it looks like... That would be Daniel Thompson with the kick. Minnesota wearing orange, Iowa wearing white. On your screen, Iowa want running from left to right, Minnesota running from right to left. Squib kick, and it's fielded by Jennifer Bowling. And she picks from it up. Bozeman, Montana. She picks it up and returns it for. Now she's still going. Oh, she's, she's still going. She's at the 40, trying to get to the 45, looking to turn the corner, and she's taken down at the 47-yard line, so that's where Iowa will take their first possession. And she was taken down by Melissa Acevedo. And on offense for Iowa, the starters will be Sarah Trammell, Jennifer Bowling, who just uh, returned that ball, Ashley Blackford, Courtney Axleen, Megan Egley, Allie Milonig, Terry Gray, Jean Ellum, Lori Yoder, Deanna Horn, Robin Jones, and Robin Jones, that completes the offense for Iowa. We'll get to the Minnesota's defense after the next play. 
First down and 10 for the Thunder. At the 47 yard line. And it's a handoff. At, at midfield and stopped. Well, and they give her forward progress only to the 48. So for Ali Milonig, a running back from Grafton, Iowa. That was a gain of one. Exactly, so a good defensive uh, start for the machine. And speaking of defense, end tackles, Lee and Petnode, defensive tackles, Campos and Olsen, and the linebackers, Cersei, Walruff, and Bishop, the secondary, Blakely, Petch, Wilson, and it looks like they have Acevedo out there. Iowa likes to run two quarterbacks. It depends on the formation of the play. Here comes the second one. It's a pass, and it's and ruled it's incomplete. Incomplete. Cassie Pesch defending the play. A good job for her. That is Courtney Axley out there. Their other quarterback is Angela Schrader. They will use both on, depending again on formation and how the game is going. And of course, with incomplete pass, that stops the clock. It's third and ten. One minute and five seconds have elapsed in the first quarter. Two evenly matched teams. And they're getting in the trenches, ready for third and 10. Minnesota with four on the front line. Actually, and still under center. It's another handoff. And that play is stuffed. Give credit to the Minnesota machine defense. They force a three and out on Iowa's first possession. Walruff and Wilson on the tackle. Fourth and nine. So Iowa will likely punt here given field position and it, and then Minnesota's lining up that way. We have Cassie Petch to receive the punt. And there's the snap. Clean kick from Malong or Milonig, and it's going out of bounds, so there will be no return. The refs will spot it at the 33. And so now we'll get a chance to check out the Minnesota offense. On offense, quarterback Nicole Feets, 11 of 19. Again, not a lot of passes. Team's more run-oriented at this level. Lisa Bastian will be the running back, and she's had a great season. We'll get to that in a second and we'll get to the rest of the starting lineup as the machine are wasting no time on offense. Feet's under center. And it's a handoff to Bastion and that play's broken, broken up. up. They will spot it. It looks like the 31 yard line so a two yard loss on the play and uh, I'd say that was pretty generous. So on offense it's Feet's Bastion at running back, Acevedo the fullback, Thompson, Wilson, Walruff, will make up the receiving core. And then you've got the Graham, Pat Noti, Allman, Baker, and Bishop. And here's a long gain. Oh, she almost broke it for long gain. That's Bastion again, 19 yard gain on the play. Minnesota, they like to go, no huddle on their offense. So they aren't gonna spend a lot of time uh, drawing up a play. They like to run at it and go hard. And that's the experience of Coach Dan Lickness. He spent some time with the Minnesota Vixen. This is his second year in the second year team of the Minnesota Machine. Quarterback draw. Looks like it may have been a broken play. Looks apparently a gain of three. It looked like there was going gain to happen. Second and eight. It looked like it was a handoff maybe to the fullback or the running back, and now their fashion's going to come out for this play. And it looks like. Uh, now they're Minnesota's going to the huddle. But uh, yeah, broken play, but uh, Feats made it work, got a couple of yards out of it. Fouls on the 47 yard line, lining up again. Standard eye formation, Feats handing off this time to 25, we'll get a name on her in a second as she brings it up to the 43 yard line, that is Daniel, Daniel Blakely. Blakely. <laughs> so Blakely picking up four yards that will bring up second and four. or third and three, excuse me, third down. Yeah. 
A big third down here as Minnesota looking to get into striking distance. And can they continue with their eye formation? Feet's heading off to Blakely. She's going nowhere. She gets stuffed behind the line. Four-yard loss on the play, and that will likely force Minnesota to punt. Uh, offensive line just broke down in that last play. Like I said, these are two evenly matched teams. You're going to see a lot of that, a lot of broken plays, but it's going to be both sides. You're going to see strong defensive efforts here from both Iowa and Minnesota in this game. And uh, the machine are still huddled up, so I'm on. They may be going, going for they it. They might be going for it. Fourth and seven. Well, that I suppose you proved you could stop them. At no, the it last looks possession. like Danielle Thompson is lining oh, up for the punt. You're right. You're right. There's Thompson. Thompson, their kicker. And back to receive for Iowa. Well, we'll get a name on her in a second. Clean kick. And a clean catch. At the 20 yard line. And here heads up to the 27. And Minnesota, good coverage in their lanes. A seven yard return. And that was Mary Walruff on the tackle. Seven yard return. That was uh, Kendra Parker, I believe, returning that kick for the, for the Thunder. And yes, it is. So, uh, yeah, give credit to Walruff and Minnesota. And Gen they just uh, stayed on their assignment. So, Iowa wasn't going to get much out of that return. So first possession in the books for both teams and no points yet, but uh, this could be a low-scoring affair. We'll find out. Still have Axley in under and center. There's a handoff. It's a handoff to 27. That's Megan Egley. Egley brings it out to the 32-yard line. Now the spotter at the 33. So a six-yard gain. That will bring up second and four. And, hey Mike, I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm having a hard time seeing these numbers on the uh, – Iowa Thunder roster. Well, yellow on white, I think that's just hard to see, period, in terms of color schemes. You, for you forgot to bring the binoculars for me. But. <laughs> I'll work on that uh, next season. This is the machine's last regular season home game, but uh, they did clinch a playoff spot with their win over Kansas City last week. Second and four here. We have a motion from Egley, and Axley drops back. It's a screen pass. To Agley, Agley catches it, gets close to the first down, but then she gets leveled. So the machine force a third down here at the 35-yard line. Third and five, ball on the 33. Actually, they just changed it now. It's, what is it? Third, third and one. one. Uh, 36. Looking at old stats. Sorry there. Both teams run oriented, so we'll see how well the machine can penetrate that line of scrimmage. I was here earlier in the season and saw them play the Nebraska Stampede in their home opener. I heard that was a 50 to nothing blowout. Yes, it was. That was the Stampede's very first game. Uh oh, what could be an offside? That may be an offside's call, so Iowa could get the first down here. I saw some motion, but we'll check the flag. It is offsides. It is offsides. So a uh, first down for Iowa by virtue of the penalty. Although they did gain enough to move the chains as it was, so we'll see if they accept it. They declined the penalty, but in either case, it was a first down. Iowa coming into this game 228 yards per game on the run versus 50 yards on the pass, so they are a run-heavy team. Minnesota is too, but Iowa especially so. And here comes another handoff. It's time it's to Agley. And she's taken down for a four-yard gain. That actually was... That was Mary Walruff once again. Wal Walruff with the tackle, and on the run was... Milanig. Like you said, I'm having a hard time reading these numbers, and I have 20-20 vision. And about 15 years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> Second and seven for Iowa. We're just about halfway through the first quarter. Go, 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 go. 
And it looks like the rain is holding off, but we'll uh, check here. This time it's uh, Igley with the run, and she gets, she or that's Milanig again. And, and she gets passed midfield down to the 49. And they give her the first down. So a seven yard gain for Milanig. And it looks like the rain has stopped because I see our parabolic operator out there now getting the sounds of the field. So that's always a good, that's a good sign for us. We don't have to worry about our cameras getting wet. At least from falling droplets. But now it would just be nice to see a few more people in the stands here. Uh, it looks like one of those high school rain outs, but uh, you know, I think with this being the second year for the Minnesota machine, I think a little bit more exposure and we'll start seeing the people in the stands. There was a decent crowd last week. Uh, and I think the rain just scared them off more than anything. Here we are, first and 10 on the 49. It's a pass from, X, and it's caught, but the receiver, Sarah, Sarah Trammell, was not in position, and so even though she caught the pass from Axley, and it's not gonna go for much, a gain of three. She uh, was a little off balance making that catch. So second and seven coming up for Iowa. Now you were here for this first game. I mean, th describe the atmosphere that you experienced and kind of what got you into this uh, Women's Football Alliance. Well, I actually covered the Minnesota Machine last year. Um, Lisa Olson, the owner of the Machine, contacted uh, Sports Page Magazine, who I do some writing for, and they asked me to cover the game. So I covered, I think, three out of the four home games last year. Action. As we see a handoff. This time it's to Jennifer Bowling. Bowling. And Bowling brings it up to the 43-yard line, so it will be third down and about four to go. And so you came in, covered some home so games? So I came in, covered some home games, and I was impressed with what I saw. I saw people who came in here wanting to play the game. I didn't see a lot of the egos. I didn't see, you know, a lot of these players, they have to go out and find sponsorships in order to be able to play. And, and yet this is just... You know, when you when you see the raw passion of people who want to get in, they want to be here, they want to play. It, it, it gets addicting. You, you feed it feeds off of that. Third and three for Iowa. A big third down here. It's a fake handoff, and now they're going back to their deep player. That's a Milonig, and Milonig gets stuffed behind the line of scrimmage by Cassie Petch. Petch. Petch, the big offensive weapon, making a big defensive stop and bringing up fourth down. And going off what you said, uh, you and I, of course, worked together on a lot of Lynx games the last couple seasons. And then uh, you mentioned about this league, and I actually was here last week. We were going to do their game against Kansas City, but uh, conflicts came up. But I came in to scout and actually had to fill in as the emergency public address announcer. And uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, the crowd really got into it. And I tell you, the funny thing was, I didn't realize how influential my voice would be to the audience. Whatever I said, they and would do. we got a flag. Mm. Delay of game, possibly, but we'll check. No, it's a false start. Five-yard penalty, so a little, a little push Shiowa back five yards. It might give Minnesota some better field position as uh, Petch is back there to receive, and that's a thing for Minnesota. You don't see it as much for Iowa, but Minnesota, they don't have a deep team, so they have a lot of two-way starters like you'd see in some high school games. It's kind of re reminiscent of the old uh, Duluth Eskimos back in the 1920s. Clean kick. Patch. Clean kick. Pass back, and she, she muffs it. it. She picks it up, though. Picks it up at the 8-yard line, and she gets Ooh. taken down at the 10. Well, muffs it, and Minnesota will start deep in their own territory for the next possession with 3.57 to go in the first. And it's a scoreless game here in the first quarter. We expected a defensive rivalry, and I think we've got it. Well, coming in, both teams, Iowa allowing a few more points than Minnesota, but uh, Iowa 4-2, Minnesota 5-1. They're only lost outside of the conference, so both teams have done quite well in the division. Minnesota, of course, winning the first game at Iowa earlier this season as we have Feats back under center. And she hands it off, and that play doesn't go very far. No gain on the play. Okay. 
I really like this uh, running defense from both teams. And if you're a fan of defense, they're just sticking to their assignments. And they really, the only play that was broken up was that run by Bastion, and she got stopped at midfield. And that, was, that wasn't even a three-yard gain. So what I'm seeing here is that, again, it's that as we watch the handoff, and yet another stack up, and this one may have been a loss of one. Uh, three, they're going to get a loss of three. Loss so of three. it's going to be third down and 13. Now, I wonder, is the rain, if, is it affecting grip and maybe affecting how the players are approaching uh, these run plays? Well, I think that may have something to do with it, but I think more important is the fact that you got two defensive-oriented teams here, and it's hard to break through that line as we have third and 14 from the six. They're going to try another handoff again, and uh, I think this was just to try to get some field position, but no gain on the play, so quick three and out for Minnesota and uh, a good defensive stance by Iowa. They're going to get great field position on their next possession. It's Four. It. Fourth and 13, balls on the seven yard line. That was a gain of one with just over two minutes left in the first quarter here at James Griffith Stadium. And it should be interesting to note that uh, Minnesota, they started slow last week against Kansas City. They uh, were down eight nothing and then uh, after that scored 22 unanswered points. So Minnesota. They do, they do have a very explosive offense when the you know when the uh, line can make the holes when the when the blocks are there when they go back to the fundamentals so that takes an Iowa bounce and it's heading to the 20 yard line that ball will go right at the 20 yard line gain of 13 <laughs> who's out there Bucky Scribner <laughs> Uh, well, that's better than uh, that Joe, is, that's Joe actually, Theismann's one-yard punt. Well, that's actually better than Bucky Scribner because he had a nine-yard punt. The former Viking and Packer kicker. So Iowa, they will start virtually at the Minnesota red zone. But being a run team, uh, they haven't passed a lot, and the passes haven't been too deep. So a key for Minnesota maybe to stop the run, and maybe they can limit this to three or maybe even zero. So we'll see what uh, Coach Lickness has for his red zone defense. So far, the defense is pretty spread out. Four in the line. It's a handoff. Hand hand and Eagley. stacked up by Sam Byram. Byram with the tackle. No gain. Second and ten. Both teams, again, just sticking to their defensive assignments and refusing to break as we have a quick substitution in for Iowa. Now, as I was saying earlier about uh, one of the things that I like about women's football is that they go back to the fundamentals. And when you start getting the professional levels of men's football, you start seeing them drift away from that. As we have the next handoff. This is to Milanig. Milanig trying to turn the corner, and she gets to the, close to the first down marker. Let's see what they spot her. They're gonna, it's very close, so it's gonna be third and. Third and inches. inches. Third and, yeah, third. Third in, and inches. Third and inches, so another big play here for Minnesota as uh, we should get one more play in before the clock expires. And not only are they a fundamentals-based uh, lead, but as you mentioned, the egos just aren't there. There's not a lot of uh, egos or star power that you'd see in other leagues, and uh, they're just here to play and uh, play the game well. Well, absolutely, and that, that's, what, that's what the draw is. The draw is just seeing teamwork, seeing the fundamentals of the game. Igley and Milanig in the backfield. They hand it off to Milanig. Milanig has the first down. She's at the five, and she'll get run out of bounds. And they spot her at the five-yard line with 11.4. That might be the last play of the quarter. So a big well, she ran out of bounds, so there's 11.4 seconds left. We will have another play. First and goal, ball and five. Well, now they started the clock again, so yeah. that will be the end of the quarter. Yep. The Scoreless Iowa's tie. To Iowa's heading to the sidelines, and time expires in the first quarter, and it is Minnesota Machine zero and the Iowa Thunder zero after one. Well, but it is significant in the sense that the rain has stopped, so uh, the 
folks that put the umbrellas away. And as you mentioned, football, a sport that can be played in just about any weather, but I think for the fans, it's nice that they don't have to get drenched <laughs> for a and little if, while. And if this were baseball, they'd still just be taking the infield right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. They well, still have the grounds crew out there uncovering the uh, mound in the infield. I'm sure that's happening right now with the Twins. Uh, they have a night game tonight against Atlanta. So uh, we be, as we uh, change quarters here, Iowa threatening. Minnesota, last couple plays they've had holes uh, that Iowa's been able to break, not for a big game, but getting, you know, six yards here, seven yards there. So what do they do to get back to their assignments? Well, what they got to, I think right now what Coach Lickness is doing is just trying to rally his team, trying to get them to remember to be playing that fundamental, don't miss your assignments, and point out some of the key players to watch. They got to make the big stop here. Minnesota, very good on defense, but not known necessarily for tackles for loss. Their leading tackler in that category was Yolanda Searcy with 6.5. So Minnesota not known for getting behind the line of scrimmage, at least uh, in terms of one big player. They prefer a more balanced attack. But uh, Iowa's team, it's more focused on Robinson and Hirakawa on defense. But, uh, yeah, Minnesota, they've said there's no big star on defense. It's the whole team effort. So while Cersei only has 6.5, you'll see the next few players on that list with 5.5 and such. And big as we begin the second quarter, we get another goal. hand off. First That's and goal. bowling. Can she punch it in? She does. Yes, she does. And it is six to nothing for the Iowa Thunder. So the Thunder strike first with the touchdown. Iowa strike first with <laughs> the Iowa Thunder strike first on a rainy day. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Although Minnesota had the situation before last week against Kansas City, and then they bounced back. So uh, bowling with a five yard touchdown run as they line up to the extra point. And to kick it is Parker. Bad snap, and now they're going to go to a two-point conversion. Bowling has space, and she'll and just she'll walk, walk in. in. A missed tackle from Sarah Bishop created a wide open lane, and Bowling just ran it in, and so it's eight to nothing with 14:53 to go in the second quarter. But uh, Minnesota, they're not a team that's going to hang their heads for too long. Oh no, they're going to bounce right back and. Pretty much have the uh, mentality that if they score, we have to score. If they don't score, if we don't score, they don't score. And that's I, what I liked about this team watching their game last week. They don't really hang their heads over a deficit. And it, so what? It's eight points. It's a one touchdown game. It's not going to win it necessarily. As long as the as long as they don't let themselves get too far behind and in a hole that they have to climb out of. I think Coach Lickness is saying, hey, we'll be just fine. Just maintain your composure. It's only one touchdown. This is the third possession of uh, that Iowa had. They'll get through it. But now what they need to do now is find their rhythm on offense. And they're lining up for the kick. Patch it, set to return. This time, she muffs it again. But that's, she picks it up. That's Thompson. Oh, Thompson that is, on the return. Thompson on the return. That's right. The kicker from the machine now returning Iowa's kick as she gets to the 26-yard line. Fumble. Oh, and Whistle. they roll they, it down. They're roll rolling it down. it down. Down by contact. And so Thompson gets it out to the 26. So Minnesota having some difficulties uh, handling those kicks. And you wonder, perhaps the ball's still moist. I mean, the rain has stopped. But it's a wet field out there. And uh, back in the old days, I've been watching many football games here at Griffin Stadium. This used to be a grass field and it was a, a mud bowl with uh, Concordia and St. Paul Central both uh, sharing this field for many years. So uh, switching the turf, it definitely doesn't look so uh, muddy as it would have been. First and 10. Nicole Feets lining up. And it's another handoff to Bastion. Bastion looking to turn the corner. She's going to get a few yards out of this one. She gets the first down. An 11 yard gain for Bastion and that's really what Minnesota needs. They don't necessarily need a home run play but you know get a first down out of that and get some momentum. Well that's what I said about Minnesota needing to find themselves. They just they just need to find their rhythm and this is a, a team that has a very explosive offense. And they can be down eight to nothing, and next thing you know, it's tied up. 
they can be tied up and then get that get that quick turnover and put it back in and next thing you know you know the opposition is down by eight so anything's happening here as we have another handoff bastion she breaks the corner she's going to get close to the first down again down at the 48. so they will give her the first down so two first downs by bastion and coming into the game she was averaging 7.4 yards a carry so bastion can move the ball as she's proven here with 21 yards in the last two plays Second down. Well, that'd be first down. Oh, first down, excuse me. <laughs> Scoreboard operator had to change it. <laughs> I need to start looking at the sidelines. So we have Feats under center, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they hand it off to Bastion, but maybe they try something else. No, nope, they go they to Bastion. Right back to Bastion, who gets stacked up and pushed for a loss. So a three-yard loss on the play, and uh, now does Minnesota look to try something different, or what do they do at after uh, getting stuffed well after getting stuffed and we're on what second down now i'd expect to see them actually try to pass it uh don't uh don't be surprised to see katima wilson step up uh wilson standing on the sideline so it will not be to wilson uh danielle thompson is lining up as a wide receiver i've seen uh Thompson in the last couple of seasons makes some good plays and we're going to go quarterback draw and we have and a, flag. a flag there may have been a face mask but we'll check and an, another thing to mention too with the Minnesota defense in particular that I haven't noted yet is they're without Kim Miller who is a big uh, producer on the defense we do have a face mask penalty it's against Iowa, Iowa. so that will move the ball up five yards uh, It is a five-yard penalty, so that is a difference between the NFL where they changed it where a face mask is an automatic 15. But uh, that uh, gives Minnesota a break. They were behind the line of scrimmage in their, before, and now they're three yards away from a first down. With 12 and a half minutes left in the first half. And it's a hand drop to Blakely, or it's a toss to Blakely, but she gets pushed for a loss of one. On the tackle was Mook Bascom, number 28, it looked like. And it was, yeah. Again, Iowa having a hard time reading those numbers from up here. Third down, four yards to go. Ball at the Iowa 45. Big third down here for both teams, in particular for Minnesota. They're trying to get some momentum on offense. And then Iowa looking to ensure that the machine do not respond. Coach Lickness is talking to the official. Roberts and Bastion in the backfield for Minnesota. And it's a handoff to Bastion. Bastion and with some a room. Sweep and a first down. And the first down and, and more. Keeps going down to the 28-yard line for a first down. 17-yard gain for Bastion. And uh, she's had 11, 10, and then she had that loss of three, and now 17. So the last uh, four plays, she's had double-digit yardage. Now, Mike, what did I tell you about an explosive <laughs> offense by the Minnesota machine? When they get that machine well-oiled, you watch out for anything. Watch out for a few long gangs, but it just takes a little bit of time for them to get that rhythm going. But once they do, watch out. They're razor sharp. And that's what got them going in their game against Kansas City was the running game. So we'll see what they do here. Again, Roberts and Bastion in the backfield after that third down conversion. This time they toss to Bastion, and she gets stuffed behind the line of scrimmage again. Loss of two. So second and 12 coming up for Minnesota. But I like that Minnesota, they're continuing to go with what works. They're going to take Bastion out for a play, probably give her some time to rest up. And we see Katima Wilson, or Katima, yeah, Katima Wilson uh, is now in the lineup. And do not, do not, I would not be surprised, as I'm fumbling for my words, I would not be surprised if you see a uh, screen pass or a cross pattern over to Wilson. No, and they handed off to Blakely, and she gets, gets tripped stopped. up by it looks Stephanie like, uh, uh, Chantella Steffi. Steffi, and it looked like 
Bascoom had an assist there with that tackle, so a long third down here for Minnesota. And uh, I don't think we've seen the passing game yet out of the machine. No, we have not. And they've had, uh, where's the pass? 428 pass yards, uh, 71.3 yards per game. So they've, they've proven they can pass the ball. I think because of the wet field, they've just chosen not to at this time. There's still a light sprinkle out there, although the sun's trying to break out. And here's the pass game. She was broken up, and, and that play is intercepted. intercepted. So Iowa with a big uh, third down conversion. and But that play started. I don't have a number on who got to uh, feet, but uh, she got there just as she threw the ball, and that uh, altered the trajectory just a little bit. And Melissa Acevedo, you got to give her some credit. When the play was blown, it was intercepted. First thing she did is she ran in and uh, and got the tackle. Did and you it, catch who uh, intercepted? I could not. Uh, we'll show. Well, we'll uh, do our best to uh, get that for you. But uh, yeah, I couldn't see the number on the interception. But uh, like you said, Acevedo didn't uh, let that get to her. She got the tackle, and so that stops. Uh, could have been a big return. So now it is first and 10 on the Iowa 25 for the Iowa Thunder with 9.31 left in the half. As Axling remains under center, we might see a pass coming from here. And Axling's going to look that way. Here she comes with the throw, and it's caught. Heading to midfield and breaking some tackles is number 18, Ashley Blackford. Blackford runs out of bounds at the 41-yard line, so Iowa making a big statement after that interception. And she was pushed out of bounds by Danielle Blakely. Without Blakely uh, uh, using her motor to run, run, run her down at the sidelines, that could have been all the way down for the score. 34-yard gain for Iowa. And I have to ask, uh, perhaps is Iowa, does Iowa have the advantage here with uh, having fewer two-way starters in Minnesota? Well, I think actually Iowa has the advantage in the fact that they want it more. This is this is it. I mean, they, they've got to beat uh, the machine pretty heavy-handedly in order to have that playoff spot, and that's what they're playing for. They've got a lot of fight in them today because they know that the season is on the line. It's not just the game, it's the season. We have a stoppage in play. It looks like a timeout. Timeout, Iowa. Timeout, Iowa with 8.39 to go in the second quarter. And like as you said, uh, Iowa, they have to win by 15 or more to take the Midwest Division title. And so as you said, this is the season right here. And it's interesting to note, even though Minnesota was a smaller roster, they did beat Iowa on the road. So like you said, perhaps Iowa just wanting it more versus an issue of uh, roster size. Well, anytime you get down late in the season, you're against an evenly matched opponent, you're on their turf, you want it more. Now the interesting thing with the machine too, and then at when I was on PA last week, they were looking for this. I mean, it's a professional league, but they're looking for kind of a Saints uh, feel as you would, if you would go to games in the Midway. They have some uh, skits, and uh, even last week, uh, the owner, Lisa Olson, uh, wasn't afraid to encourage me to uh, have a little fun with the PA job. And uh, I had a couple jokes in there uh, for the sound effects guy, and then uh, what really would surprise me was I would start yelling defense, and the crowd would just get into it. Well, that's what happens when you have, a again, not just the players who get into it, but the fans. It's a very, very dedicated fan following. You know, the crowds may be small right now, but uh, they're a reminiscence of Green Bay Packer fans. I mean, even if we were in, you know, 20 below zero weather, you'd still see the same 50 people sitting here. So actually under center again, this time it's a handoff and uh, gets a few yards, does Brett Campos on the tackle. Bowling, bowling with a five-yard gain. Campos with the tackle. And so uh, Iowa going back to the run game, and they've had quite a bit of success there so far. Well, that they have, and Iowa, you know, they've got it together. But I, I also think, I, as you mentioned earlier, that you know, perhaps the field conditions may have something to do with the lack of passing game today. Plus, they've also had that success, and if you find success in one thing, you want to keep doing it, keep doing it. Wear down that Minnesota defense. And I think that's what a lot of what Iowa's doing right now. Second and five. Axeline 
Did she draw Minnesota offsides? No flag, so uh, Bowling will get this handoff, and she gets to the 27-yard line, so that will be good enough for first down as they spot her at the 28 or 27 and a half. And pushed out of bounds by Melissa Acevedo once but again. They don't give halves in uh, football, so I'll unofficially a 10-yard gain for Bowling, and so Iowa showing off their run game in the first half. Sander Dye again, two receivers to the right side. Actually, in another handoff to Bowling, and this time Bowling gets wrapped up before she can get too far, but she does pick up three. So second and seven coming up, and uh, Iowa just going with what works, just sticking with the run, and uh, maybe they'll try a pass here as they get uh, close to the Minnesota red zone again. And Lisa Olson on the tackle. Olson, the owner of the team, didn't play much last week. In fact, actually last week she was uh, sending updates through Facebook and Twitter. I don't know if uh, who's doing that this week, but uh, Lisa's very dedicated in many ways. Bowling again in the, in the backfield for Iowa, but this time actually looks to throw, oh, and it's intercepted by Acevedo. Acevedo, one person to beat, doesn't beat her, but she gets to the 35-yard line, and so Minnesota responds with an interception of their own, and in, in essence, they cancel each other out. Offsetting interceptions. <laughs> but for Minnesota, that was big, because Iowa- was a huge play. Iowa was marching down, almost in the red zone, another score, and they would have been in big trouble, so give credit to Acevedo who picks up another interception. That should increase her total. We're getting the stats on this. That will increase her interception total. Actually, that's her, that's her first. first. Well, it increases it to one. So Acevedo with her first interception of the season and at a, couldn't come at a better time for Minnesota as they go back to Bastion in the backfield. I Can't think what I tackle. think what this team is missing right now is Kim Miller. You know, Kim Miller, she's been the quarterback for this team. She's respond, you know, she was a large factor in why they had that 50 to nothing victory on the season opener against the uh, Nebraska Stampede. And she's not in the lineup tonight. And I think right now on the offensive side we're seeing the fact that the uh, veteran Kim Miller is not at the helm of this team. Miller with a broken arm, uh, you're right. Uh, she averaging 4.3 yards a carry, and on defense, six tackles for loss, 26 altogether. So she added a lot to this machine program, but uh, we'll see what Bastion can do here as she gets another handoff. Cuts inside, gets to about the 36-yard line, so back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's third and 10 for Minnesota. Well, they give her a yard, so it'll be well, third and nine and a half unofficially. And you're right, just Kim Miller uh, last week as I think the sun is breaking out uh, just a little bit. It's getting a little lighter out here. And the stadium lights have not come on yet. They uh, they won't come on until about half to, well, with this being in June, the sun doesn't set till nine, so uh, plenty of daylight. I give it to the beginning of the fourth quarter. So uh, the nice thing about these summer events is that you don't, don't have to turn on those lights until uh, late in the evening. Big third down here for Minnesota, and this time it's a fake handoff and a fumbled handoff. Iowa falls on it. it looks like that handoff was to Cassie Petch. Petch muffed the handoff. Uh, Adrian Peterson, like in the sense, just not getting a good grip on the ball, and Iowa with another chance with 4.50 to go in the second, but. Uh, Minnesota got an interception the last time, and I'm sure uh, Coach is telling them, hey, you stopped them last time, just do it again, and we'll be fine. I wonder, is that ball, maybe the uh, moistness of the ball because it's out in the wet field, maybe that affected the grip? Oh, I'm sure that affects the grip. Actually, hands it off to the fullback, Eagley. Eagley breaking through, still on her feet, and she is brought down, and a fumble, and it, it's going back to Minnesota. So last two plays, two straight fumbles, and, uh, well, they offset each other again. They intercept, we intercept. They fumble, we fumble. I think now Minnesota... Or actually, we fumble, they... <laughs> <laughs> 
in any case, it off, it off, they offset each other, although Minnesota is looking to uh, add one more to that list. You know, they score, we score, and so they're hoping for a touchdown. And that's the only thing they haven't done here in the first half is scored. But uh, a wacky first half, especially this quarter. We had two interceptions and now two fumbles. I couldn't see what happened, but uh, I'm thinking Minnesota went in there for the strip with uh, Eagley still fighting for yards. Katima Wilson and Danielle Thompson have both lined up as wide receivers. And they'll be using blocks for Bastion, who tiptoes across the sidelines to get to the 34-yard line. So a... But that no flag, it did look like Cindy Taft hit out of bounds on a late hit, but that was not called as a penalty. It's a 38 yard line, I had trouble reading the uh, yard markers there, so a good first down run for Bastion, in fact, uh, very close to the first down line. And they spot her at the 39. You're right, it looked like a late hit, but uh, they can't call a review and on that play, so uh, they'll just have to let it go. And we do have to note here that it's a, not a seven referee crew like you see in the NFL game. They're only using five, which is the number they use in high school. So uh, they can't quite see as many things. It's a quarterback keeper for Feats, and she has the first down easily as she That's gets to the 45. 45. Six yard gain on the play, and so Minnesota going back to the run. Less than four to go. Now what I haven't seen yet, and I think this is possibly because Kim Miller hasn't been in the lineup for the Minnesota Machine offense, is the uh, utilization of um, of Katima Wilson and Danielle Thompson as wide receivers. Because in every game I've seen so far, those two would get a lot of yards from passing. They've been sticking with the run. Bastion almost muffed the handoff, but she gets back to the line of scrimmage before she's ruled down by contact. And uh, with second down coming up here, I should note that uh, for one of these players, this will be her final game before deployment, number 18, Lacey Roberts. So uh, Roberts uh, will be taking on uh, bigger challenges after this. Any idea on uh, which unit she's with? I am not sure. Well, uh, maybe we, we'll, well, try to we'll get have a, to find out at halftime. Yeah, we'll get a word at halftime. I know you've had some experience with that. So uh, compared to this, uh, there's some bigger challenges out there. So give credit to Roberts for uh, taking that on. Right now, uh, another handoff to Bastion. She breaks through the hole and gets to Iowa territory at the 49. So it will be second and about four, or third and four for Minnesota with two and a half to go. There is a two minute warning here. So we'll see if they decide to uh, wait for the clock to hit two minutes or if they try to get this off. It, Minnesota will start the second half with the ball. So uh, it looks like they're just going to, they're content to hold it to the two minute mark. A two minute warning about ready to hit. And uh, five, four, three, two, one. Two minute warning. And Minnesota may be looking to see what Iowa was gonna bring out there, but uh, I'd say for Minnesota, that's not a bad move. Let the clock run down. Uh, Iowa still has two timeouts left, so if it doesn't work, you don't give Iowa as much time to uh, come up with something at the end. So the two minute warning, and uh, for halftime, well, we'll show you some highlights. I thought you were going to get out there and start dancing at halftime. <laughs> and it's the Iowa Thunder 8 and Minnesota Machine 0. Maybe for a Lynx game I should do that. I uh, know they've been they've been uh, struggling. It's kind of uh, interesting. They've had a, a lot of they have a lot of talent just haven't been able to gel much yet, but uh, that's been happening a lot in the WNBA LA um, having a rough start and San Antonio off to a slow start as well on the west. Well, I think with the Minnesota Lynx are concerned, you're going to find that now they have all the pieces in place. Now everybody knows the roles. Now it's time for them to step up and start playing like a team. But uh, until that happens, we're going to still have some more dark days in Minnesota sports. <laughs> yeah, although uh, I should note the Minnesota Machine and Olsen, uh, they're big fans of the Lynx. Uh, those two teams support each other. They have Quinitra Hollingsworth here last week. Big third down as Feats lines up under center again. Third and four, they have to get past the 45. 
Will Blakely, she gets stuffed at midfield. And so we'll see, does Iowa take a timeout here? No signal yet. They may be waiting. Well, it is fourth down. No timeouts being called, and so Iowa may be electing to hold them, depending on what Minnesota does, because they're at midfield. And uh, Iowa, two turnovers, their last two possessions. So Minnesota thinking, you know, why not go for it here on fourth down and um, try to make Iowa burn one of their timeouts. And we're down to one minute and 15 seconds in the first half. The clock does stop for change of possession, but uh, Iowa electing to save their timeouts for now. And here we got a pass play. Feet, it's out and it's to complete to Bastion. Pass. She gets, first down, lunges Bastion. forward, gets to the first down. The clock does not stop for a first down play. Minnesota still has their three timeouts. They may want to look at using them. And that was Jennifer Hirakawa on the, on the stop. Hirakawa, one of the leading tacklers on the team for Iowa. And now Minnesota elects to use one of their three timeouts with 48.6. That was all Bastion. That was, uh, Feats was under pressure, so she throws a high arc. Bastion comes up with the grab and then just lunges forward for those last two yards. And you have to give credit to Bastion for that. Uh, you know, she's showing, you know, the fact that she's a veteran player. She's gotten all these carries today. Some of them break through, some of them don't, but she just made the play happen. And Feet's not, not a bad passer when she does elect to throw, throw. Today was her first interception of the season, but coming in 11 of 19, I think she's one of two, so it's 20, 12 of 21. So uh, she's pretty accurate with her passes when she elects to go with the pass. <coughs> so Minnesota with two more timeouts and 48.6 seconds. So in essence, they have an eternity here to try to at least get three on the board. Lining up in the I formation. That's been Minnesota's default uh, formation and another handoff to Bastion. This time she stopped. Out. With the tackle, can't quite get a number. A six yard loss on the play unofficially and on the tackle for Iowa is Chantella Steffi. That was a seven yard loss on the play and uh, Iowa with great penetration there, 40.4 seconds. So a long second down coming up here for Minnesota and uh, do you start looking at perhaps going with the big play or do you try to uh, shorten that gap for a setup on third down with second and 17. Well, I think what uh, the Minnesota machine are going to do, they're going to try to shorten the gap a little bit. They're going to try to get down at least uh, closer to field goal position and maybe try a deep strike in there. Uh, right now, they're a little bit out of any consideration for scoring. Um, well, Thompson does not have a 60 yard range to her uh, leg right now. <laughs> She made her only one kick this season. That was last week, and that was 34 yards. Uh, that's a little ways to go before 60. Here's the big strike. Feets going deep. Over to Thompson. Good coverage, and it's incomplete. So uh, third that was down. Kendra Parker on the defense. Parker doing just about everything, it seems, for Iowa today. Kicking, catching, and... Uh, Setting up a good block there at that pass intended for Daniel Thompson. So and I think it was Parker who actually had that interception. So uh, third and 17, Feet showing her long arm. And they, they may need it here with 32.8 left. The clock does stop for an incomplete pass, so no timeouts have to be used. Third down and 17. Need to get the ball past the 34 yard line on Iowa's side for the first. And they line up on the right side. Feats is going to throw right. This time it's a shorter throw and it's to Thompson. Captured. Captured. Hauled well, in by Danielle well, Thompson she, at the 43 yard line. Well, she did capture the ball. Yes, but she did. <laughs> it's uh, just past the original line of scrimmage, though, but she does get out of bounds, so the clock stops, and uh, you have to think Minnesota's going for this. Uh, 26.5 seconds left. I think you make one strike down towards the sidelines, try to get that first down, and try to get it within the 20 yard line to give Thompson an opportunity to try to 
score. And Coach Dan Lickness for the Minnesota Machine has called a timeout. There's one left on the scoreboard. I thought Minnesota had used one earlier, but... Uh, yes, they have. So I think they've got... I think they're out of timeouts. I don't think the scoreboard operator kept uh, up to date on that. But, uh, and I guess it's one of those things where it's a great if it works, uh, maybe not so much if it doesn't, because in, with that timeout that they used up, Minnesota could have used the whole field and, uh, and then called a timeout to stop the clock. But uh, I think sensing that there's not much time left... Uh, and since they don't carry over to the second half, I think... Uh, you got him. You might as well use him. The Lickness said, yeah, you got him. You may as well use him. And uh, so the important thing for Minnesota will be if they catch that ball if uh, to run out of bounds and get that clock stopped if they uh, don't have an open look down to the end zone. Yeah, now the scoreboard is now correct. There is zero timeouts left. And the Iowa Thunder still have two timeouts remaining. 26.5 seconds left in the first half. We're at Central St. Paul Central High School, James Griffin Stadium. And both teams are lining up. Here it is, a big play, perhaps the biggest in this half. Fourth and nine from the Iowa 43 yard line. Beats will be looking to throw, and that play that was play just broken up. Broken. She went back and then she moved forward and uh, well, we, I guess we won't know what uh, play was being drawn up. 20.6 seconds left. The clock is stopped for the change of possession. The Minnesota machine failed to convert on fourth down. So that sets up first and 10. Uh, balls on the, on the Iowa 45 yard line as the Iowa offense is set to return. Iowa's leading eight to nothing. Two timeouts left. Yep, you have to imagine Iowa's going to try to throw a couple bombs downfield, and maybe they throw something shorter up the middle, knowing they can still stop the clock uh, two more times. But uh, with an eight to nothing lead, that's still not. You'd always want to go in with at least a field goal into the locker room at halftime. And they send in Angela Schrader now, who has that deep range, and, and a pass. intercepted. It is intercepted by Danielle Thompson. So Thompson coming big with the interception and uh, well, forget all that uh, theory and uh, strategy for Iowa. That's the third turnover Minnesota has forced, but they have not come up with any points off those turnovers yet and that, that is, neither team has. And that is Danielle Thompson's second interception on the season. That one for no return. She had one previous to this and that was an 18 yard return. No touchdowns on uh, interception returns. I think for Thompson, though, no return, but I think uh, she's happy knowing that uh, Iowa's not going to get that chance to uh, make this a two-possession game going into the locker room. We've got 13 seconds left, first and 10 from the 31-yard line of Minnesota. And now Minnesota going to try a throw. And this pass is, is intercepted, intercepted right back. We'll try to get a number for you, and she's still running. That is 21, Teresa Moss, and she's taken down as time expires. So it's been that kind of a quarter, just uh, all, almost on top of each other. Both teams just th throwing the ball to each other in this game of hot potato, it seems. But uh, I think the quarterbacks are both colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Iowa leading in the key stat category so far, though. It is 8 to nothing as we go into halftime. So... Uh, We'll come back, talk about some highlights of that first uh, half, and uh, we'll take a break. And so until then, uh, hang around. Television proudly presents WFA football. Last game of the regular season, the Iowa Thunder taking on the Minnesota Machine with championship implications on the line for the Midwest Division title. I'm Mike Keaton. Jeff Williams, my partner, will show up shortly. He's taking some photographs for the sports page. He uh, does coverage for the sports page on this team and the Minnesota Lynx. Iowa leads 8 to nothing as we start the third quarter, and it's really just been, hasn't been a a lot of offense in terms of highlights it's been more defensively oriented 
Both teams forcing three turnovers in the second quarter, two interceptions and one fumble on either side. But Iowa getting together a good run in that first half on their third possession of the game, punctuated by Jennifer Bowling's five-yard touchdown run, and then Bowling uh, took a fake handoff or a fake kick on the extra point attempt and ran it in for two, and that's the only scoring of this half as Iowa leads 8 to nothing, but a lot of implications here. Iowa may win this game, but if they do not win by more than 15 points, Minnesota would win the tiebreaker and take the Midwest Division title in the American Conference. And so uh, you know, there's still a lot at stake, and right now Minnesota is still winning, so to speak, in terms of the grand scheme of things. Now, last week of the regular season, playoffs start after this. And uh, it works just like NFL does. There's an American conference and a national conference. And at the end of the season, the champions from both conferences will play each other for the right to the WFA title. Machine just in their second season of play. And they will start the third quarter with the ball. And we'd like to remind you, if you want to order a copy of this and any other game we televise, please visit us online at the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com. That's the sportsbrain Numeral one blogspot.com of course, TSB is short and form for the sports brain. So Patch set to return this kick, and it's a deep one. And this time she fields it cleanly. Actually, that is Thompson as Thompson gets to the 30. Thompson, the kicker for the machine. And then Stutter steps her way to the 36-yard line, and that's where Minnesota will begin their next possession. So Thompson will have a third, got Minnesota the 36, and that's where they'll start their next possession. Minnesota having some difficulties with turnovers in that second quarter. They had a uh, pretty good run going until they had a pass intercepted. But uh, in the sense of things, both teams at zero in terms of the turnover margin with both teams forcing three. Thompson, until this game, had not thrown a single interception, so... Uh, Things are a little bit different now as they hand off to Bastion. Bastion breaks the corner, and she's gone. She's heading to the 50. She's not quite gone. I was getting a little too excited, but she does get to Iowa territory in the first play of the second half to the 48-yard line. So a 14-yard gain for Bastion, and Bastion doing what she does best. When she can get a hole and break free, she can pick up some big yards. As we mentioned, coming into the game she had 47 carries for 347 yards averaging 7.4 yards a carry so Bastion doing quite a bit on offense when she gets positive yardage first down and 10 for Minnesota and this time they go to Blakely Blakely trying to get to the right side and she breaks through a hole and not quite a first down but she picks up a decent gain seven yards on the play second and three coming up for Minnesota Minnesota going to what they do best, and that is the run. And there's Jeff Williams down there in the field. He'll be coming up here in a bit to uh, resume commentary. He's uh, getting some pictures for his article. Uh, and uh, if you've got a car out there uh, that uh, you'd like to uh, give off, uh, Jeff might be interested. Toss to Bastion, looking for a hole. Bastion does break through the hole and picks up a yard, so it will be third and two, which is a very manageable third down for Minnesota, and we've got a player down, it looks like Bastion. It is Bastion, and they're going to call a timeout, and that is something Minnesota does not want to have happen. They've already lost Kim Miller, who had a broken arm after last week's game. They don't need to lose their star running back here Minnesota struggling to get things going on offense. We see she gets back up, which is a good sign. So it looks looks like it's more of a arm hand problem as both teams take a knee. And we see her walking back. In fact, she's going back to the huddle. So it just took a hard hit it looks like but uh, actually they'll take her out because w because the machine took an injury timeout in any football league 
by rule, they have to send in another player for at least the next play. So Bastion will not be available for third down, and that could be critical. They do send in Lacey Roberts in her place. As we mentioned, Roberts, this is her last game before deployment. And this time it's a quarterback keeper by Feats, and ooh, it's going to be close. And no, they do not give her the first down. Gain of one on the play, so it's fourth and short, but now they can send in Bastion if they want. And she's still holding her arm, though, so uh, they doesn't look like she'll be in for this next play. 12.27 to go in the third quarter. A big fourth down here at the Iowa 38, and you've got to figure Minnesota's going for it. Being in Iowa territory... It's a toss to Blakely, and that play's going nowhere. Give credit to Muscum, or Bascom, with the tackle. And Iowa takes over again on downs. Minnesota just not able to get enough penetration to go deep. They have yet to enter the enemy red zone. So Iowa will take over at the 41-yard line after a three-yard loss on that last play. But we see Bastion with their helmet back on, so it looks like she'll be... A going back in on the next offensive possession for Minnesota, and that is a good sign for the machine. Well, Iowa with their first look in the second half. 12.03 to go. And it looks like the rain is now moving away. It's been persistent most of the day. In fact, it's been this pattern for most of the month so far, just nothing but rain. June, the wettest month on average, is Axeline goes back under center, and she hands it off to Bowling. Bowling gets a couple yards before she's brought down. On the tackle was number 90. That is Sarah Bishop on the tackle. Well, they gave her three. They gave Bowling three yards on that play, so it is second and seven for the Thunder. Bowling the team's leading rusher coming into this game. But they go to the fullback, Eagley, this time. Eagley pushes her way up to midfield, and she's taken down just short of it to the 49-yard line. I was going to say, Bowling coming into this game at 84 carries for 927 yards and 11 touchdowns, and so she picked up her 12th earlier this game. So Bowling, the uh, primary weapon on offense for the Thunder when it comes to the rush. Third and short here, third down and two to be precise. Thunder fans, or the machine fans, trying to get their team into it. Not a lot here, at least compared to other games because of the weather, which is kind of a downer, but they still play regardless of rain. There's some penetration in the backfield, and they stop. The Thunder, Brett Campos with the tackle on bowling. They give her maybe a half yard, so it will be fourth and short. Iowa may go for it, but give credit to Campos, who stopped bowling from uh, getting that first down on that last play. I just spoke with Brett Campos' sister, who's in attendance today. Uh, her sister and I were graduates of the same high school, although in different years. She graduated in 02. I graduated a few years later, but uh, we worked together at a high school musical uh, back in the day. Iowa going for it here on fourth down as they send in Schrader, and uh, forget any, anything about plays. We have a stoppage, and uh, Minnesota thought they had a fumble and a recovery, but uh, Iowa should pick up the first down here on another run from Bowling. And they do. So Bowling can't get it on third down, but she converts on fourth down, and so Iowa will move the chains. James Griffin Stadium, of course, home to uh, quite a few tenants over the years. St. Paul Central is the primary tenant uh, since it, it is on school grounds. I'll get to that more in a second as Axling is back in. Another handoff to Bowling, and we have a flag on the play. It's behind the line of scrimmage, so this run may be coming back. 
Bowling does get out to the 38 yard line, but the refs are already signaling a penalty against Iowa. So it will still be first down, but uh, that run will be negated. Illegal motion is the play. And that play would have been good enough for another first down, at least based on our angle. So uh, that hurts Iowa as they go back five yards. St. Paul Central's James Griffin Stadium, of course, they hosted the Minnesota Thunder for a few years. That team has now since disbanded. Uh, another soccer team has taken its place at the National Sports Center in Blaine. Concordia used to play their games here. And before turf was put in, uh, it was a mud bowl. The field would get torn up by both the football and soccer teams. Schrader this time under center, and she's going back to pass. It's a short one, and it's almost picked off. Patch was close for a, to a pick six, just a little behind that pass. She got the deflection, but no interception. That would have been a touchdown for sure, but uh, Minnesota does get the stop, and they bring up second and 15. Concordia no longer plays at this stadium. They have their own Seafoam Stadium. I called the game there last fall. Uh, St. Agnes happens to play their games there, and it's also a nice facility with the space they had. Of course, James Griffin Stadium, a very nice facility in itself. This place has seen many renovations over the years, from the installation of turf to the expansion to an eight-lane track, and then they uh, finally got the scoreboard updated to an LED format. Shotgun formation this time for the Thunder. We haven't seen this yet as Schrader is under center and Schrader bounces off one player. That's actually Bowling. I don't know if that was a Wildcat or not, but Bowling gets brought to the 49 yard line. And we have two players down on both teams, so we're gonna have a timeout. Byram and with the tackle for Minnesota. And she is down, but now she's getting back up, but uh, the bigger concern right now is for the Iowa player that's down. It may be bowling. Byram does walk off under her own power and get to the sidelines, and uh, she's still reeling. Both players taking a knee. 8.46 to go in the third. It will be third and 13 on the next play, and we see Bowling getting back up and walking off. That's a good sign. Uh, she will go to the sidelines as, again, football rules delegate that an in, if an injury timeout takes place, the players must head to the sidelines at least for one play before they can go back in. So Bowling will not be available, and that could hurt Iowa here. Bowling doing a lot on offense on the run so they're going to have to find, try to wait or they're going to have to find a way to get 13 yards without her it's third and 13 they need to get the ball past the Minnesota 38 for a first down and now my partner comes back in after taking its photograph so uh, big third down coming up Axling will stay under center again bowling not available because of the injury timeout Axley drops back, looking to throw, has room, and it's intercepted. Sarah Bishop, she's got some room, heads to the 40, down to the 30, no flags, to the 20, to 10. Can she punch it in? She does! Touchdown, Minnesota! A huge interception returned by Sarah Bishop, and Minnesota has new life as they finally Break through on the scoreboard on defense, and uh, Jeff, you picked the perfect time to come back into the game. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'll tell you this: the yeah, I was just down on the sidelines with them in this little machine, and they were very animated. In fact, just before this play, they thought that they that uh, the Iowa Thunder were uh, had a false start, no call, and so this one is just definitely firing them up. Now, I talked to uh, Coach Dan Lucas at halftime, and what he said is that they're still making adjustments. They're the, uh, he knows that the Iowa defense is very, very tough, especially in the trenches. And so he's, he's been poking and prodding and just probing and just trying to find the breakthrough. 
and hope that he can stretch the uh, their defense thin and then power it in for the end. Minnesota going for two. They hand it off to Acevedo, and she is stopped Enough. before she gets there. But that is a key touchdown, though, because it puts the deficit back to two, and so now Iowa has to score two touchdowns again to get enough of a distance to win that division title. So Every touchdown is a key touchdown in this game. Exactly. So uh, Minnesota responding with a touchdown, and even if they don't win this one, they're going to make it that much harder for Iowa to try to get that division title, which is what's on the line right now. But still, give credit to Bishop. I mean, that if that doesn't wake up the machine, I don't know what will. And uh, we were just talking before you got here, Bowling was not available for that play, and you have to wonder if that uh, gave the machine an opportunity because of the injury timeout. She had to step on the sidelines for at least one play. And, uh, and that wasn't a play. And it turned out to be a big break for Minnesota. And, uh, well, it finally, our first turnover that uh, gets points off of it, and uh, Bishop wasting no time. In fact, I think that's her first interception. We're checking the stats now. Checking the stats now, but I think we ought to just keep it on the interception page for the remainder of the game. <laughs> yes, that is her first uh, interception. interception. And her first return for a touchdown. I believe it was 55 yards or so. I couldn't quite make it out on the marker. I mean, it was a big play, but uh, yes, yeah. Yes, it was 55 yards. 55 yards. Okay, I can still count. That's a good sign. Thompson for the kick. It's a squib kick, and it is picked up. Can't quite get a number. It's picked up by Milanig. And she brings it out to the 48-yard line. So decent field position here. And uh, we've got a... we got ourselves a ball game, folks. we got a little scrum going on there between uh, Mandy Merriman and Cindy Taft. So I think that rivalry is starting to uh, boil up just a little bit. Of course, you and I being uh, Vikings and Packers fans, respectively, we understand that the division... Well, our, our rivalry <laughs> goes back to 1961. <laughs> Right, but uh, when, the, when the teams take the field, uh, they get into a little scrum here and there. They uh, really buy into those rivalries. In the but I'll tell, you, I'll tell you in the NFL, the biggest and oldest rivalry? Packers-Bears. Packers-Bears. Although technically, technically, since I know you love stats, <laughs> uh, the rivalry should technically be the Cardinals and the Packers because the Packers played the Staley Cardinals or, or no, the Chicago Staley's one week before the Chicago Bears. Step up, step up, step up. Here we go. Bowling with another handoff. This time she gets to the brought out of bounds at the 49. The, and she's frustrated. And they've got, Iowa's gone with that the last couple plays, a direct snap to Bowling. I don't know if that's their version of the Wildcat or if, they're, uh, if there's something new up our sleeves, but... Uh, yeah, you got to love these. Uh, what that is is trying to figure out how to get an extra 15 or 16 points. That's what it is. It's uh, We've got less than one complete half left to go, and we need to get points on those on that board. Going again to bowling. It looks like bowling is now taking these direct snaps, and again, not much, and we have a and flag, flag on the play. On the play. Bowling kind of reminded me of Cordell Stewart on that play. We'll check the marker. Was there a, there may have been a late hit, but we'll see. Face mask. face mask. Five yard penalty against the machine. So that will move him up five yards and I believe th they'll replay the down. Yes, they will. So a second down for Iowa. And that just hurt because that was a good stop for Minnesota and that they were looking at a third and long there. So Iowa getting a break. These two teams played each other very tough last year. And so this is the second season with both both teams going at it in evenly matched games. And last year the Minnesota Machine played their games at Woodbury High School before relocating to St. Paul Central High School. Well, I hope they don't leave. This is a nice place. It is a very central nice location. Place. And uh, Milanig pushing her way through, getting to the 40-yard line, so she gets more than enough for an Iowa first down. But, uh, yeah, I hope they don't leave this place. And uh, it's a great place. And um, I talked to Lisa Olson last week, and she says what's nice about this league is that they're done when most of the other big sports are through. You, you know, Obviously, it's after the NFL season. They start just after the college basketball season ends, so there isn't a lot of comp direct competition. I know baseball season's getting underway. But WNBA season is in full <laughs> swing. 
So there is some competition, but uh, it's not like they're fighting with the NFL or the NCAA tournament. As it's bowling with the fake handoff. And now she, she gets a hole, and, and she's that's gone. a touchdown. That See is gone. Daniel later. Thompson cannot catch her, and it is now 14-6 to six in favor of the Iowa Thunder. 39-yard touchdown run for Jennifer Bowling. That is her 13th touchdown of the season. And, and Bowling celebrating as she should in the end zone. I don't believe we have an unsportsmanlike uh, rule in this game. For excessive celebration, I know that's uh, drawn some mixed uh, reactions from the NFL side, but uh, they're going to go for the extra point. Parker set to kick. Kick is up, and it looks like it it's is good. good. It is good. So 6.02 it... left in the third quarter. It is the Iowa Thunder 15, the Minnesota Machine 6. Now, again, this has uh, got playoff implications on the line for the Iowa Thunder, and in order for them to become the division champions, they need to beat the Machine by 15 or greater, which means one more touchdown would do it for the Thunder. So for the Minnesota Machine, they're still playing catch up. Right now, the big focus is just trying to perhaps score another touchdown, but uh, they're going to have to do it on offense, something they haven't uh, done lately. But that's big for Iowa, getting a touchdown after giving one up uh, to Minnesota's defense just to get their cells back together. Well, I, in the first half, we were talking about injuries, especially the injury to Kim Miller as we have the kickoff and it is a nice kickoff and Muffed Danielle again. Thompson muffs it picks it up at the 20 yard line and she's over to the 30 35 and she's down at the 39 yard line 19 yard return on the play and you mentioned of what with and Cindy tapped uh, made the tackle for Iowa now we see that Lisa Bastian's going back in there and that's a good sign you know she had to step out in that last offensive series for Minnesota and uh, I have to imagine they were biting a few nails uh, oh yes they were <laughs> they might have to repolish them later on if uh, they go with that but uh, uh, repolish and I think repaint <laughs> <laughs> Probably orange and black, I would guess. Uh, well, uh, I'm sure Lisa would like that. I'm sure all the machine fans would too. But Bastion back in. Let's see what, how they respond. They give the hand back to Bastion. And Who's she at the 40, 45 to the 49-yard line. That should be good enough for a first down. <laughs> it looks like they spot her just shy of it. No, they nope, do give it to her. It's the first down, Minnesota machine. Ten-yard run for Bastion, and uh, well, that's how Minnesota's going to get this done. They use Bastion to set up their offense. They still have yet to uh, get that deep passing game going, and we know Feats has an arm. If she can get a long pass connected, uh, that could really give Minnesota some momentum, but we'll see what happens. Toss to Bastion. She breaks through the yeah. hole. And it's it's stuck quickly, she but she breaks up, through the she's tackle. Past the 40, down to the 40 or uh, 37. 37 yard line. Gets pushed up for another Minnesota machine. First down. 12 yard run. So again, Bastion moving the chains on two consecutive plays. When, when I when I talked to uh, Coach Dan Lickness at halftime, he said he was trying to probe and hope to wear the. Iowa Thunder defense down, which will help them create more holes. And that's exactly what's happening here in the third quarter. 4.35 to go. Iowa Thunder 15, Minnesota Machine 6. Now Minnesota going back to the huddle, which uh, is interesting here because they were uh, going no huddle early on, and so now I'm wondering if they're uh, trying to keep their players fresh. Bastion again in the backfield. But they hand it off to Acevedo this time, and she will pick up a few yards as she brings the ball up to the 33-yard line. So uh, a six-yard gain on the play, just about. Well, a good first down run and uh, giving Bastion a break there, perhaps uh, saving her legs for a bigger run later on. But like you said, Bastion has that breakaway capability when she gets those positive yards. A lot of them this game have been double digits. A lot of them have, and I'll tell you a couple of other things that we're not seeing here that I'm, I'm used to seeing is Maggie Alt. She's been very ineffective today. Uh, is she even in the game? I just don't, you know, number 34, Maggie Alt. Uh, last time I was at a game, she had like 
125 yards rushing. And here we go with a... Feats, cool. that was a handoff Beats that handoff. was broken up, and now it's turned Beats. into a first down. Into the red zone. <laughs> That's the first time the Minnesota offense has gotten into the red zone, so another first down. That was a 13-yard gain. It looked like a broken play, and then Feats just took it to herself and uh, found a hole and moved the chains herself. But I know this team has been... Even though they've been winning, they've been struggling without having Abby Krause in the lineup. She was injured in the very in the uh, home opener. You know, you don't have Kim Miller in the lineup. I believe Krause was a St. Cloud State hockey alum. I believe she is. I talked to her last week, of course, uh, division rivals with Minnesota, so there's uh, one subject I might want to avoid. Good idea. <laughs> Bastion with the handoff, breaks to a tackle, gets to the 11-yard line, line, or 12. It gets tougher from uh, this angle here, but another good game from Bastion, and now they get to the 12, and now they're within field goal range for Daniel Thompson. And now we have a whistle, a timeout, timeout for Iowa. Iowa. First charge timeout of the second half, and uh, I think you're right. Iowa is starting to look a little tired out there on defense, even with a deeper roster. Well, that's and, and you see that in the NFL all the time. You see that in college. If you have a very good defense but a thin defense, the other team can ram it down at you and not seem to make any gains at all in the first half. And then midway through the third quarter, as a defensive lineman, defensive uh, secondary, you're tired. When you get tired, you start having that mental lapse. And when you have that mental lapse, that's when the holes are created, and that's when the offense starts uh, waking up and runs roughshod right over you. And I think that's what we're seeing with the Minnesota machine right now. They're grinding their way into first down after first down after first down, thanks to uh, Lisa Bastion. And I think Iowa's starting to show some uh, signs of wear right now. And the fact that it's not raining anymore, we don't have any thunder or lightning, I think that's not benefiting <laughs> Iowa either. But right now, Iowa still has a nine-point lead. It's 15-6 to six with 2.27 left in the third period. Even if Minnesota gets just a field goal, it would uh, put Iowa out of range uh, from winning that division on just one touchdown. Back to Bastion. Bastion so gets another through. Hole. Catchy break through. It's touchdown, touchdown, Minnesota. So Minnesota strikes right back on with their first offensive touchdown of the game for Bastion. A 12-yard touchdown run officially and her sixth of the season. So uh, Bastion getting it done on the run. Uh, they haven't used Cersei much this game, but uh, I don't think they need to. Bastion doing all the work on offense, and uh, Minnesota comes away with this. Uh, she's definitely... Uh, a player of the game candidate. Now, what did I tell you in that first uh, first quarter about the explosiveness of the Minnesota offense? It's showing it now here in the third quarter. And more importantly, that puts Iowa out of one touchdown range from winning that division. So Minnesota making it that much harder for Iowa to uh, mount a division run here. We have a flag. That will be an offsides call, I would imagine. But uh, with the kick being good, I don't think Minnesota yeah, will accept offsides it. on Iowa. Well, unless they allow it to enforce on the kickoff. We'll see the what officials are congregating. I know that is an option. They could enforce the penalty on the kickoff. But we'll see what happens. It was an offsides call. The extra point will stand. I was assessed on the kickoff. And we've got a uh, raffle uh, going on here. We've got the winning ticket. I think it's got to go in the other room there. Well, the ruling is offsides against Iowa. As uh, we pass down this raffle ticket, so uh, someone's going to get a few more. Uh, bucks tonight in his or her pocket and it's gonna have to go in the other room we have to yeah once we get it to the other uh, once we get it to the PA room uh, we'll have the winner announced 220 to go in the, the third quarter it's 15 13 Iowa but Minnesota answering with a touchdown and making it tougher for Iowa to win that division so Minnesota they might be trailing in the game but they're winning in terms of the division implications as we have this comical exchange uh, 
You never know what's going to happen here at these football games, ladies and gentlemen, as that takes an odd bounce, but it's still picked up by Milanig as she gets to the 40-yard line looking for a hole, and she finds one, but can't cut right and turn the corner and still get tackled at the Iowa 46. The tackle was by number 72, that is Kendra Kilpatrick, the woman who sang the national anthem earlier in this game. So uh, at this level, uh, some players do just about everything. Playing offense, playing defense, singing the national anthem. And uh, they're handing off that raffle ticket with 2.12 to go, so my partner will get back here in a second. So we're going to see if Iowa can answer back because, again, they're going to have to score another touchdown, get a stop, and then try to do it again. This time they're going shotgun, and they stay with bowling. It's a handoff. Handoff to Milanig, and Milanig gets one, maybe two. About one and a half. Again, they don't give halves in football, though, so uh, Minnesota getting that job done on the run, even with a smaller roster than Iowa in terms of pure numbers. Second and nine for the Thunder. And they probably could use some Thunder right now. They're probably wondering where all the rain is going. It seemed to be going in their favor, and then as soon as it dried up, it's uh, now starting to shift towards Minnesota's end. And that only means that the machine is starting to rain on the Thunder's parade. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm sure how many jokes that they heard. Bowling. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them. Bowling, going Bowling, right. doing the Cordell Stewart. And she won't get far. She gets stacked up by Sarah Bishop. Heather Baker with the assist on the tackle, so a long third down coming up, and uh, that was a good game tackling effort by the machine. And one thing about the Minnesota machine, some of the players are actually familiar if you're a Minnesota Vixen fan. Uh, Sarah Bishop, Danielle Thompson, and head coach Dan Lickness. I know those three all were uh, part of the Vixen squads for a while before coming over to the machine. I'm sure there's others that are just escaping me right now. From what I've heard, the Vixen uh, not having the success the Machine have had this year. Bowling again in the shotgun. It's a handoff. And she is going nowhere. Milani gets stopped right about the line of scrimmage. So a fourth down play. And it looks like with 17 seconds, uh, Iowa's going to have to convert on the next quarter. I don't see them in a hustle. Actually, they, are they sending out their punting unit? <laughs> it looks like the punting unit is coming on. Special teams. So they're going to let the time expire here in the third quarter. And so at the end of three, it's Iowa 15, Minnesota 13. But Minnesota keeping that distance at two. So Iowa is going to have to score two touchdowns to win that division title. And so right now, Minnesota in a pretty good position. They're in a very good position right now. It's very comfortable when, even if you're losing, you're still winning in the playoff hunt. And as we mentioned earlier, since we're at the uh, quarter break, uh, number 18, Lacey Roberts, this is her last game. I got a chance to talk with her at halftime. She is a member of the 133rd Air Nash Air Airlift Wing of the Minnesota Air National Guard. Uh, she serves at the Security Forces Squadron, and she will be deploying sometime next month over to the Southwest Asia area of operations. So we wish her very well on that one. Here comes the punt. And Patch is just going to let that one bounce, and that might be a wise idea as uh, Iowa, it takes an Iowa bounce. Down to the Minnesota three-yard line. So deep in their own territory, Minnesota's going to go, although for Patch uh, with that directional kick, it'd be very hard pressed to try to return something like that, especially with the grip of the ball not being uh, optimal. So 15 seconds have elapsed in the final quarter. So for Minnesota, what do they do right now? They're down by two, so they're trailing in this game, but uh, they're in a good position. I well, I think what they do is they continue doing as long as as long as long as Bastion still has her legs under her, you keep giving the ball to Bastion. I think at this point in time, not at this field position, but if they can get back into the uh, Iowa Thunders side of the field, that's when you'd want to 
Start opening your passing game a little bit. And Bastion not getting anything on that play. And that's going to be the key for Iowa, trying to force a three and out here. So 14.25 left. As the, each possession grows in importance. What do they say, football's a game of inches? And right now it may come down to some inches depending on what happens here in this possession. It's a quarterback keeper, that's a fumble. Who fell on it? No Remains ruling to be yet. seen, no ruling. No ruling yet. A lot of deliberation. And I see three fingers, so Minnesota did fall on it, but they're going to have third and long here deep in their own end zone, or in their own territory. If they can't move it up, they would have to punt from their own end zone, and, and that would be great uh, field position for Iowa. Now right now the ball is on the Minnesota four-yard line, so you don't have a lot of real estate to work with. If they're going to continue, if they're going to win this game, they got to just get that first down. But of course, if they had Brett Favre, they'd fumble it or <laughs> intercept it right away. So, well, that that was later. You know, that was uh, later in the game. Well, this is later in the game. Well, that was the last possession, and uh, again, going nowhere. So, Feats, a quarterback keeper, and Minnesota doesn't gain anything on that drive, and uh, they're going to have to punt from their own end zone. Yeah, that Favre thing, well, that's, uh, we've both been bitten on the, on that Favre with the NFC Championship game with the Giants and then uh, with the NFC Championship game against the Saints when he was a member of the Vikings. And you and forget about the uh, playoff, the wild card playoff game against the Atlanta Falcons, the championship game against the Dallas Cowboys, um, the championship game, or the divisional, the yeah, divisional against the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> and that was when he was wearing green and gold. <laughs> and don't forget uh, his stint with the Jets, as that's a clean punt, so Minnesota getting a yeah, good punt. Taken on Parker the, with Parker the patch. At the 30, and Can't she's got the corner. Room. We have a flag, a flag on the coming in, and it's down at the 15-yard line. We'll check the flag. I was going to say, uh, far Take, with the Jets. Well, she, she was taken down with uh, Heather by Heather Baker on that one yeah Favre had one season with the Jets and well that they were doing well then and then his uh, last play with that team was an interception so so that just tells me that Brett Favre is the best regular season quarterback ever <laughs> playoffs a different story he does have the one Super Bowl in against the New England Patriots as a member of the Green Bay Packers exactly so it's uh, an illegal block for Iowa so that's a break for Minnesota because uh, that pushes them back to the 25 after Parker got it up to the 15. So uh, Minnesota, they'll take anything they can get right now in terms of yardage. So now the question is, when does Brett's daughter, Brittany, start playing football? I didn't, there aren't any Wisconsin teams in this division, but uh, you know, if uh, I'm Brett's daughter, you know, I'm watching this, you know, I might suit up. Begin a legacy in a different league. I'm Who sure. says she needs to be in a, in a uh, Wisconsin uniform as we're down back to the original line of scrimmage at the 15. That was bowling as they go back to their traditional format. That's enough for a first down. And uh, well, yeah, I mean, Favre is, well, he actually started his career with the Falcons before he got traded to the Packers. Yeah, but hey, Brett lives in Minnesota now. So <laughs> perhaps, you know, maybe next season we can see uh, Brittany suit up for the Minnesota machine. I'm sure Lisa would like that. So if anybody out there uh, knows the Favs, could you have them call Lisa Olson and uh, have Brittany call Lisa and uh, we'll see if we can get that done. Schrader handing off to a uh, player. I can't quite get the number. Byron with the tackle. The handoff was to y Lori Yolder. Or is that on the O-line? I couldn't quite read who uh, ran I that could ball. Not, I could not read. No, it wasn't Yoder because she's on the offensive line, but I still couldn't see the number. That may have been. That's because it's yellow. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, this time I could read it, and this time it's bowling with the handoff as she gets to the 
seven yard line. It will be third down. And now this is a big play coming up here. Minnesota trying to stop Iowa from scoring a touchdown. If they can even limit Iowa to three, it would still make today two possession game in the sense of winning that division. On that last play, I have to commend Brett Campbell. She broke through the line and almost got to the quarterback. Uh, but unfortunately for the machine, the handoff had already occurred. That was almost a broken play. It was a good heads up play from Campbell. Another shot here. It's a toss this time to Bowling. Bowling touchdown. runs in for the touchdown. An eight yard touchdown run. And Iowa. They may go for one, or are they going to try for two? My guess is one at this point. And so Bowling with all three of Iowa's touchdowns, and she brings her total up to 14 on the season. Now she handles a snap, and it's a bad snap, and now she's going to have to try to make something happen here. She's stuck, and she has nowhere oh, to go. Oh, is she ever stuck? And she it's dishes a pass, it off but it, to a linebacker. But it's no good, and so that's going to make things a little bit tougher for Iowa. It's 21-13 in favor of the Thunder, so Iowa could still get a touchdown and with a two-point and uh, with an extra point uh, get enough for a division win, but uh, they're going to have to put up with Minnesota and uh, Lisa Bastian once more. Now, as I was saying about uh, during the last Minnesota machine possession, now what this team needs to do, if they can get some decent field position, get it past the 50-yard line, then they can start introducing the passing game a little bit. Just try to continue to advance, take some time off the clock, even though they're behind, but take the time off the clock, get a, get a touchdown here, get that conversion, you got a tie game, and then your defense really has to cramp down. But if they, if they run another series like the one they just ran, then Iowa still has a chance at actually getting that division. Big series here. It's a squib kick, and it could it go out of bounds? Nope. No. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, it will. So Minnesota, the Minnesota first step. Minnesota capitalizes on the penalty. So first step for Minnesota, decent field position. They're going to start at their own 40. Now, again, we haven't seen Katima Wilson really... Uh, too involved in this game. She's got, I believe, a couple of tackles tonight. She's out on the field. She's getting the block. So she's doing the all, all the things that are necessary to keep us from talking about her. Except she's also <laughs> a darn good wide receiver. And the intangibles. And it's all those intangibles. But she's also a very, very explosive uh, wide receiver. And it'd be interesting to see now, with 10 minutes and 16 seconds left in regulation, if they go to Katina Wilson at all in the passing game. That last uh, kick, it was kind of, it's like when baseball, when the uh, outfielders wait for that ball and hope it drifts to pass the foul line. So uh, that was exactly what happened in that kickoff. So Minnesota starts at their own 40. That gives them plenty of room to uh, try out some things, but uh, not if the... Here's back to Bastion. She's Bastion. got a hole. She'll get some yardage. And she picks up four. Four yards. But more impressively, I, I thought that was going to get stopped for a five-yard loss. Uh, they broke through the line of scrimmage. Uh, give credit to Bastion for breaking that tackle. Also and, have to give credit to uh, Katima Wilson on that one for the block. <laughs> that set all of that up. The, the woman who's doing everything well enough to avoid being mentioned uh, perhaps saves a loss of yards on that play. And Acevedo is on the sidelines getting rubbed down by uh, by uh, Abby Krause. Looks to be cramping up in the thighs. That is an issue you know, regardless of the weather in football and regardless of the gender cramping. Acevedo quiet on offense. Bastion no, not so much as she turns the corner and works her way up to midfield. Midfield and the ref spotter uh, that should be good enough for a first down. It is. And uh, if you're Acevedo, I know getting cramped up isn't the greatest thing, but with Bastion uh, doing the things she's been doing in the running game, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter if the rest of the team is uh, so quiet. But I'll tell you one other, one other person that we talked about earlier was uh, Mary Walruff, and it looks like she's out on the uh, sidelines on crutches in the second half. She might have been banged up. Uh, we'll, uh, I guess get a, we'll find out perhaps at the end of this game. Bastion again with the handoff, and she gets another five yards, and 
She's getting him in small bunches here, five, seven, and now another five. And I think in another five yards, if I were uh, Coach Lickness, that's when I would start opening up with the passing game. And Bastion, I don't, we don't have uh, official numbers here, but her running game today has just been phenomenal. I mean, she's easily broken 100. I'm sure she's got up 150 or so. I mean, she has uh, been great today. I'd love to see her and Adrian game. Peterson run. <laughs> well, Bastion with uh, pretty good ball control, too. If those two could hook up, that would be quite a tag team. And this time it's a handoff to the fullback for another two yards. So a third and short here for Minnesota. A big third down, and you have to imagine at this point, it may be four down territory, even though uh, they're trailing. Well, absolutely. I mean, you gotta just take advantage of the time. Again, you're looking at playoffs, you're looking at championships. You're also looking at keeping your team healthy here. They take out Roberts. Catch. And Wilson back to receive. Acevedo back in and Bastion in the backfield. Wilson hasn't had much action. But they hand it off to Blakely. That wasn't uh, Bastion. Oh, nice spin move. She's going to be. Down to the 39 yard line. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. First Man, down. First down. So they needed three and they got maybe 3.1. <laughs> well, let's see. Three yards and one inch. <laughs> But more importantly, that would be 37 inches. <laughs> <laughs> more importantly, that uh, will allow the machine to kill more clock. If even if they don't get a, a touchdown here, they would just need maybe in one more stop or two to win that division title. But knowing the competitive nature of the entire coaching staff and all of these players, I know that their sole goal right now is to get it in the end zone. Now the question is, will they? Right now, there's six minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. Hand off to Acevedo, and she pushes her way forward for maybe one. They gave her three on the play, and it looks like they're giving Bastion a rest there. Blakely with the last run, now Acevedo, perhaps saving Bastion's legs for uh, another big run, and I agree with you. It's a one-possession game. Minnesota, they're, uh, they're not looking, they're not content with uh, being down by eight. They want to get this game tied up and uh, set themselves up to win. And they don't want to be content with a 5-2 and two record either. <laughs> no, they want to win this outright. Bastion back in there. They toss it to her, and she goes up to the right side. Good blocking. On the sweep. Can't it's another three-yard gain. Can't quite turn it uh, for a big game, but making it another manageable third down. And for Minnesota, that's uh, fine for them as they continue to march in Iowa territory. We have a player down though. And, and it's Bastion, Bastion is down. Again, she was down earlier in that third quarter and uh, she's carried the ball quite a bit today for Minnesota. Now, one thing I want to point out here, because we have not we have a, the clock stoppage for injury on the field, but if you notice what the players of both teams do, and this is standard in the league, whenever there's somebody who's injured on the field, Everybody takes a knee. Sidelines, on the field, doesn't matter. If you are a player, you take a knee. We just don't, we don't see that in the college game. We don't, in the men's college game, we don't see that in the NFL. You see players who just kind of wander all over the place, but yet in, in the WFA, if a player's injured, you take a knee. Bastion getting up again. Maybe she's cramping up a little bit, but uh, she'll have to sit out on this next play, and it's third and three, and uh, when, once again, Minnesota are going to have to go without their star running back here on this third down, but uh, if they don't convert here, you have to imagine they bring her back on for fourth down if she's available. But you're right, everyone takes a knee, and so they, for that moment in time, even if it's just a cramp, they all remind themselves it's uh, still a game even if they're competing against each other. Blakely back in, she ran on the last third down play, but they hand it off to the fullback Acevedo, and she pushes her way to the 31, so she's gonna be short of the first down. It is fourth down and one. A long one, maybe even two, I can't quite tell the spot. Fourth and two. Fourth and two, and Bastion going to stay on the sidelines for now. 
less than five minutes to go. Iowa with two timeouts left. So if they can stop Minnesota and get the ball back, they'd have plenty of time to try for another touchdown. And right now they've got an eight point lead on the machine. They need 15 or more to win the championship. Toss to Blakely. Oh, she gets stuffed, stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. So Iowa does force the turnover on downs and that stops the clock. And now Minnesota's gonna have to go to their defense, but they have not held, held up well against Jennifer Bowling. And you have to imagine Iowa's gonna go to her for this And, and on that series. one, you could tell Blakely was extremely frustrated that she did not pick up that extra yardage. She slammed the ball down as she was getting up. You know that she knew that she didn't get it done. So this is a big possession here for both teams. Iowa, they are, if they can get a touchdown, they'd be an extra point away from clinching the division. Four minutes and 24 seconds left in regulation. And they're going back, bowling under center this time, so they're gonna try to use their other rushing weapons. And so now this is a crunch time defense here. And Iowa, well, not so much in a bit of a bind, you know, because they're in control here, but uh, even if they score a touchdown, that extra point, not a guarantee, as we saw in that last uh, touchdown or extra point attempt after a bowling picked up her third of the game. And we saw that earlier when the machine scored their touchdown. They did not, I mean, they lined up for the field goal, bobbled snap, didn't convert. Minnesota rushing four on the front lines. This time they go to Axley and they hand it off to Bowling. Bowling gets the first down. And so that will, that will move the chains, but since it is a professional league, the clock does not stop, but Iowa will take anything they can get at this point as the clock continues to roll. They still have two timeouts. One thing that's been conspicuously missing from this game has been passing. Hand off again to the fullback. Doesn't get much. Brings it out to the 49 yard line. Gain of two and now Iowa's going to take their first time out. Well, their second. Eh? Is that, yeah, that is their second. Or, or did Minnesota, did Minnesota take a timeout? It was Iowa, so Iowa, I think the referees are uh, conferring here because they signaled Minnesota. And Minnesota timeout came off the scoreboard. So Minnesota did take a timeout, kind of interesting. Perhaps they're looking to rest up, or uh, what do you think uh, Dan Lickness is uh, yeah, I think he's Right now, I think he's sending his uh, defensive coordinator out on the, onto the field, into the huddle with the team, try to give them that last bit of instruction on on uh, how to hold up, I mean, to stand firm. Give him a little bit of inspiration, probably a couple of minor little pointers as he walks off the field. 2.53 to go, that stops the clock. Uh, that, an interesting move here, as that gives Iowa essentially a free timeout. But we'll see how it pays off. Actually, stop behind the line of scrimmage as she hands the ball off. So that play worked beautifully for Minnesota as they force a third and long. And it was Nina Sirik who was able to get through the uh, line for uh, 47. 47. And so a five yard loss on the play and now Iowa, well I thought they were gonna take a timeout. But the clock is still rolling. It is third and 12, a four yard loss, but that was big for Minnesota as now Iowa's gonna have to think about passing. <laughs> And Maddie Brent for the Minnesota Machine is on the sidelines, along with Lauren Sawyer. They're trying to get the crowd into this game. They hand it off. It's trying to turn the corner. Can't quite get a number, but she's going to be well short of the first down as she is tackled marked. by Danielle Thompson. Thompson with the tackle, and they mark her at the 46 and a half yard line as we hit the two minute warning and. Uh, a very pressure-packed two-minute warning here. So it's fourth and 12 for Iowa. And they give her a yard on that play, fourth and 10. No, fourth and 10. But in any, in any case, it's fourth and long. And so uh, the clock, if Minnesota 
stops them. The clock will stop for change of possession. They but have now, two timeouts left. So what uh, Iowa needs to do here is they need to score a touchdown in two minutes, and they're down fourth and ten. So we come out of the two-minute warning. Uh, there's no uh, two-minute break uh, like there is in the NFL for it. They're going to punt. They're going to punt. This is surprising. And Patch is going to let that one go. And it's taken down at the five-yard line now. Uh, Patch got uh, uh, bumped. At, they're marking it at marking it at the six-yard line. At the si now, Patch got bumped, and the uh, fan was uh, hoping for a interference flag. Call. But uh, I think at that point, Patch was uh, running away from the ball. So, in any case, 147 to go. Minnesota deep in their own territory, and uh, I think I was thinking with two timeouts. Uh, well, I think they're, what they're thinking is get them pinned down deep into their end zone. Into their, into their side of the turf, get the machine pinned down, and then try to get them to go three and out and give them a fresh opportunity with a uh, with good field position, probably around the 30 to 40 yard line with one last opportunity. It worked the last time. And after the first play, it looks like it may be working again. Right now, there's a minute and 40 seconds left in regulation. And Iowa's gonna take one of the, well, I thought they were, the clock is still ticking. One minute and 30 seconds left in regulation. Iowa up 21 to 13 over the Minnesota machine. Iowa look maybe saving their timeouts for the next play here, now that it's second down. You know Minnesota's gonna run the clock as long as they can. What they're trying to do is figure out how to score, but it's getting through that defensive secondary that's gonna be a challenge. But again, this is an explosive offense. Beats going to pass this time, and it's and complete. And that's there's Katima Wilson. K Katima Wilson finally gets on the uh, scoring shot on offense, and she brings it up to the 15. So that's going to be close to a first down, and now it's uh, third and one, essentially, maybe third and two, as, I, as uh, Minnesota takes a timeout. Minnesota has one timeout left. Iowa has two. 57.1 seconds left in regulation. Again, these teams have been evenly matched, and that even shows it out here tonight. This has been a really good defensive game. So what does Minnesota do here on third and two? You have Bastion, who has that explosive capability. You just completed your first pass. Uh, do you throw it, or you try to uh, run them down? Because you know you're in a position where you get a first down, you're going to force Iowa to... Uh, burn their timeouts on defense. Uh, I think what you do on, for, uh, well, it's third and two, you give it to Bastion one more, one more time, hope she can build a big enough hole to get some decent field position, get that first down. After that, I think you go to Bastion one more time and hope that she can get up around midfield and then you get a quick uh, long strike over to Katima Wilson and possibly uh, Daniel Thompson and maybe we can end up seeing a touchdown. But it looks like they're gonna go for the long game right now, and it is broken up by Iowa. We have a flag on the play, though. Iowa broke up the play, but uh, number 21, Moss, Teresa Moss and uh, Kendra Parker, they crashed into each other, and uh, that prevented a pick six, potentially. But uh, we'll And the check pass the was intended for Danielle Thompson. We did have a flag on the field, and it looks like it's gonna go against Minnesota. And so now Iowa may have a, a tough decision to make. Do they force the penalty or do they decline penalty it? Is decline oh. Penalty is declined. Penalty is declined. We're fourth down. You know what? I, uh, I agree with that. You know, fourth down, 51 seconds. You still have two timeouts. Uh, make them earn that first down. Here we go. Fourth and two. We may have an offsides call, offsides. and that's a free play. And here comes Bastion, around at the 10. Breaks another Still tackle. breaks it up. Okay, she's down at the 12-yard line. But we're going to have what appears to be an offsides call, and the refs are already signaling that. So Minnesota will get a big first down by virtue of the penalty. And that could be the dagger for Iowa. They still have two timeouts left. Of course, Minnesota's still down. They would like to uh, tie this up here in the last 41 seconds, but uh, that just made it that much harder for Iowa to get the ball back and win this division title. 
it's got to be mixed emotions right now for the Minnesota machine. You're losing the game. You're down by eight. You're going to probably have a five and two record. On the other hand, you're going to be the division champs. <laughs> do you celebrate or do you cry? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Although That's we had a fumble there. Beach does pick Beach it up. Picks it up. And she'll run it herself with some good blocking up to the 24-yard line, but and she does keep, not get out of bounds. She does not get out of bounds. 30 seconds left on the in regulation, and we have another timeout. Minnesota takes the timeout, so they are out of timeouts now with 29.1 to go. Iowa still with two. I'm surprised they haven't uh, gone to their timeouts here, even on defense, to... Uh, Try to stop that clock. I do not have any idea what the Iowa coach is thinking right now. The I don't I don't know what his goal is. I don't either. I, I mean, I'm not sure if he was informed about the situation, but uh, you know, I spoke with uh, Lisa, and I don't think she would uh, <laughs> uh, mess around with the stats or something. But Iowa, they're only up by eight. They need to get seven more or better. And uh, they're not going to do it on the defensive end unless they can force a turnover and get a pick six like the Bishop did uh, earlier in that third quarter. Machine going to get their fans into it. 29.1 seconds left. It's second and six. They're out of timeout, so if they try any throws, they're going to have to run out of bounds in order to stop the clock. Or they just get it to Katima Wilson, who breaks a secondary, who runs all the way down for about a 76-yard touchdown. And then, of course, that would really open the floodgates. Feats, quick throw, and it's Ooh. almost intercepted. Eagley. Eagley breaks up the pass intended for Katima Wilson. The fullback is going to bring up third down, and that stops the clock with 23.6, and that was another close call. Eagley had a wide open space. This reminds me of a game I did last year, Urban Bowl, where it came down to the final possessions between the Minneapolis and St. Paul All-Stars in 09, and that was a fun contest. We've got another one brewing here. Pete's looking to throw again. Clean throw, and it's intercepted, intercepted this, time. this time. And it's picked up by Moss. So Moss with the interception, 14.1, and you have to wonder, should Minnesota have tried to run that and uh, make Iowa burn up those timeouts? Well, I think this goes back to the third quarter when uh, Baston was getting all those runs, but you, she was starting to cramp up. I think that's when, uh, yeah, same with when Acevedo was getting cramped up earlier in the fourth quarter. I think that's when they were when they were in the Iowa side of the field. That's when they should have opened up the passing game. But right now, deep in your own territory. Even though the time is winding down, the fact is you should have opened up the passing game earlier, make their, make their defense have to react to you, and then you've got better options. You've got more options at your disposal. But right now, I think Coach Likeness, uh, or Likeness may have, um, you know, had a little bit of tunnel vision with this approach to the game. Except they took a knee, so I was going to win the game 21-13, but Minnesota's going to come away with the division title. And you maybe Iowa saving themselves up for playoffs. I don't know. That's kind of a strange call at the end of the game. So uh, mixed em emotions, I imagine, for Minnesota. Losing the game, but winning the division. And for Iowa, well, maybe the same thing. But uh, this was a well-fought game, even though the ending was a little strange. And both teams are going out and shaking hands right now. So we'll uh, try to get some post-game interviews here uh, with uh, Lisa Bastian, the player of the game for Minnesota, and Jennifer Bowling, the player of the game for Iowa. So uh, stick around for that, and we will uh, join you for the post-game interviews, hopefully. But uh, once again, Iowa wins 21-13, but Minnesota comes away with the Midwest Division title. Mike Peden here with the player of the game for the Iowa Thunder, Jennifer Bowling. And uh, you had to uh, overcome some adversity there. For a while, Minnesota looked like they were going to bounce back, and uh, you held on three touchdowns. Uh, you just kept on rolling. Yeah, I, our O-line did great tonight. They opened up some big holes, and, uh, you know, we, we mixed some stuff around, which is, is great about getting to play this team more than once. You know, you kind of find their strengths and weaknesses, and you, you appreciate, and you have to adapt. And so we moved some personnel around, and 
I think we kind of kept Minnesota on their toes a little bit, so that was good. And how did you get yourself open so many times? Because uh, when you were uh, <coughs> taking handoffs and uh, even on some direct snaps, uh, you got some yardage, but uh, you had that big run in the third quarter and uh, just uh, kept finding holes. Yeah, I credit that all to my O-line. I mean, they've they've been working really hard on making some quick cuts and, and working on my cutback lanes, and, you know, we just continue to get better, and it worked out tonight. Had so how does Iowa get better uh, now with playoffs coming up and you end the season with the win and a, another split with Minnesota? Yeah, playoffs coming up. We're not really sure how it's going to work out. I'm, I'm guessing that, I don't know how they do it, but based on score, Minnesota might take away the division uh, champ. So I think we're going to be back here on the 26th to, to play them again. So. I really appreciate Minnesota. I mean, I feel like we're pretty equal teams, and, and the sportsmanship out on the field is, is awesome, which makes the experience all that better. So I understood it, it was uh, f 15 or more to uh, get the division, and it uh, was a 21-13 win. But perhaps more importantly, you proved that you could win here on the road, and uh, for Iowa, that may be all they need to uh, go in the playoffs with confidence. Yeah, it was important for us. This was a big step for us coming together. We had six players down, um, so we were kind of coming in, needing to, to get some momentum, which we did, and really proud of our defense. They got us some great field position. So I think we'll do good. We've got some, some good weeks left to practice and some injuries to heal up. So hopefully we'll come back strong, both teams. And I know that Minnesota had some injuries too, so looking to come back for a really good match. Well, uh, that should be another fun uh, division ri border rivalry coming up. Congratulations, and I guess uh, we'll get to do this all over again in two yeah, weeks. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. We had great fans on both sides. It was a good energy and, and no rain tonight. So <laughs> we consider ourselves lucky. Thank you. That's too. Jennifer Bowling, player of the game for Iowa. Mike Peden here with the Minnesota player of the game, Lisa Bastian. Lisa, you had a uh, valiant effort tonight. Just came up a little bit short, and a lot of it came down to uh, turnovers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a tough game. Um, we kept fighting through it, and um, I thought that we were going to come back. You know, it was it was a close one. Even though we were down the whole game, um, we kept our heads and we kept encouraging each other, and uh, we fought till the end. They they were a tough team. They were tough on defense. Um, it was hard to uh, break through those gaps because, especially in the first half. Um, there weren't very many gaps to run through, and then it, uh, we switched some stuff up during the halftime to uh, open up the gaps a little bit. Our offensive line did awesome in the second half, and we were able to run through a little bit. So um, I really thought that we would, we would come through in the end, but we fell short, and we fought hard. So I think we'll get them in the playoffs. And provided things go according to script, uh, you did clinch the division tonight. Iowa did not get enough points to overtake you in terms of uh, points and head-to-head -head competition. And uh, in that second half, it uh, looked like Minnesota had some momentum going. You got some big runs, and Bishop got that interception return for a touchdown. But uh, tell me, what does this division rivalry, this border rivalry, mean for both of you? Well, uh, it means a lot for, for us. I can't speak for Iowa, but for us, you know, it's our second year um, in this division as the machine and um, it's huge. This, this season is, is definitely huge for us. To have the division um, means a lot and, and it's, you know, it's, it gives us a big push to uh, come back and have a, have a really good year in the playoffs and hopefully get us to the championship. So I'm definitely confident in us that we keep fighting through this. Now you'll face Iowa back here in a couple weeks if things go according to plan. So uh, what will you take from this game? You split the regular season series to uh, go into the playoffs where uh, things will really count. <laughs> yeah, um, if we see Iowa here, they're definitely going to have a game to, uh, to fight for. Um, I just I don't think that uh, they're going to they're going to be able to do it again on our home turf. Uh, we won't and we're going to fight hard. We're going to fight even harder um, when we see So. Well, you gave him a pretty good game uh, this game, even though uh, Iowa came out on top. Uh, it was a well-fought game and uh, really a good representation of the top two teams in this division and perhaps this league. So, I mean, what, what does this Women's Football Alliance do to uh, give female players an opportunity to play a game that's been popularized for years by the NFL and the, the Division I college ranks over on the men's side? Um, the WFA, it's, it's a definitely a, a great uh, league alliance. Um, they, um, I don't know, they, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Um, I don't know, I'm not very familiar with the WFA. I know there's, you know, there's a ton of teams and um, they support us and, and uh, definitely give us good recognition on their website and, um, 
think uh, I think by putting on a um, training camp in Vegas shows a that's going to be huge for us this year. The the WFA puts on that training camp in Las Vegas, and we um, we all attend that. And by them putting that on for us is huge. Um, it gets us going. It gets us to meet other teams, other players, and and you know we all we all come together um, to represent the WFA in in the best way that we can. So. Well, this game was a great representation. Your performance was a great representation. Uh, not, you no, know, you didn't get the win tonight, but congratulations. You had a great effort and uh, certainly a nice setup as uh, you start your playoff run. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was fun. All right, thanks for taking time to speak with us. And uh, who knows, perhaps the playoffs will uh, have a different outcome for you guys. Yeah, I think it will. <laughs> Lisa Bastian, player of the game for the Minnesota Machine. That will do it from here. For everyone here at TSB Television, Jeff Williams and the TV production crew, this is Mike Beaton. So long, everybody.